Hi, welcome to CTO Breakfast. I'm John Williams, the CTO at Ampliance. And I'm going to start a new series on Mac and headless CMS and talk through, from a start, the evolution of CMS and how we've got here today, uh, what a CMS is, why we've got CMS, and why it needs to change. By understanding how a CMS has evolved, in the situation it evolved in and the environment in which it evolved in, we can understand a lot of the architectural decision-making that was put in place when a CMS was first built. And we can look at all the other iterations of CMS from the very beginning to where we are today. What's really important to understand is that as situations change, then the technology needs to change. And we've gone through massive change over the last two years, in some ways a big shock to the system, that many of us are facing in terms of trying to adapt to that technology landscape. So let's take a look at why we needed a CMS and what does a CMS actually do? So in the past, there wasn't only an explosion of websites. Each website had an explosion in terms of content, literally creating hundreds if not thousands of pages for every website that all had to be updated, all have to be managed and the tools that were around were quite rudimentary. Even if you take something simple like our own website, Ampliance.com, you see there's a vast amount of content that needs to be managed, updated, as well as loads of links to pages and the navigation itself. Every page is structured from HTML, a markup language, which defines how the page is structured, what the page is gonna look like, as well as the content images, and all of the links. Imagine if the only way you could change the content on a page was by making a code change. So you'd have to find where that content lived in the code, make that change, and then resubmit the code back to the website, which is exactly what we had to do before CMS existed. Even here, it looks simpler because using the Google developer tools, you can simply find where that area code is. But imagine if you didn't have that and you had to go through reams and reams and reams of code to find the right location. Even though it takes developer skills to actually manage and edit content on a page, and it's incredibly difficult to go through all the code, it's not the only reason a CMS is invented. Once you get beyond a certain point, you need to think about how you want to organize the site, how you want to organize those pages, and how you're going to manage the overall site structure going forward that makes sense to users. Without CMS, the way that you'd actually manage the site structure would be using the operating system's folder structure. That meant you had to work on the web server itself, navigating through the folders to find the right pages, and actually manipulating and changing the folder names to match a site structure. So following the folder path in the URL would actually allow you to access the page from the website, although today there's much more dynamic ways of doing that. Once you've got your site hierarchy worked out and you've got your folder structure and your naming conventions sorted, you can now start using these URLs and putting them in structures such as menus that allow users an easy way to navigate through the site. So every single page would actually have a menu. Links aren't just restricted to menus and navigation. They can also be used inside pages and inside the content within the pages. So the problem of building a site without a CMS is actually a page is really a document. And what I mean by that is that all of the links, whether they're navigation and menus or whether they're inside the content, are hard-coded and locked inside the page, locked inside that document. It means that if there are any changes to the site structure, any changes to the way the system is organized in the folder structure, even naming changes to file names, mean that every single link to what that, where that page is and what that page is on a site changes. It means that every single navigation will change if it's been linked to. It means that every single page that has content links that may have changed needs to be managed. This can be a huge undertaking if you have hundreds or even thousands of pages. It was this complexity and the fact that you needed a technologist to make so many onerous changes 
was one of the reasons why CMS was invented. As online grew popular and became mainstream, websites became more important to businesses. Businesses had to have an online presence that represented their brand. This meant that specialist professions started to develop, particularly those in the creative industry. The web designer was actually replaced by specialists in each of the areas of web design. Creative designers focused on how to translate a brand's identity online, you know, focusing on the style, how the brand would be represented, things like colors, imagery that was used and fonts. Whereas information architects or experience architects would focus on things like the visual layout, the visual hierarchies, navigation, page structure, where information should be placed, really just the whole overall UX of the system. The one thing that's paramount for all of these concepts is consistency, which is incredibly difficult to achieve without a CMS. The CMS achieves consistency with the use of templates. Pages are divided up into types and each type is given a template or a template is derived for each type. And what a template allows you to do is define a standard structure for the page, define its layout, provide placeholders where you can drop content or even reusable components such as headers, navigation and the footer. Visual and brand consistency is achieved through the use of theming and styling which is applied to the templates. The first content management systems were created really to help business users enable them to enter the content rather than use developers and technologists to edit code. It also facilitated business users to organize the sites without having to understand the underlying technology like web servers. It allowed business users to create and manage their own menus and actually share them across the site without any code changes. Links also became automated, reducing the overhead of change. Business users could manage their pages, lay out their content, and ensure the consistency for the UX using page templates. The brand consistency can be maintained through the use of theming and styling. The first content management systems provided a separation between what you're working on and the live content through the use of mechanisms such as publishing, which meant things like Version control also became important, and then workflow to make sure that you could coordinate multiple business users developing content. It's interesting to note that when you reflect on the content management systems of the past, their basic requirements are the same basic requirements you need for content management systems today. What is really different is how the CMS actually delivers on those requirements and the unique challenges a modern CMS has to dare, not just delivering to a single web channel, but to multiple channels. Content is no longer just sent to web browsers. It's also sent to native applications, screens on IoT devices, and even voice. This radically changes how content is delivered to dare and how content needs to be structured. In our next session, we'll look at how the architecture of web CMS has evolved and how it struggles to meet the challenges of today. But now it's time to say thank you for listening and goodbye. And if you like the video, please press the like button or reshare. Goodbye.